Under the Moon. Jenny found a stone while she was digging in her backyard. It was dark and rough and came to a point. She had never seen anything like it before. Look at this, said Jenny. I think it must be a magic stone. Jenny's mother smiled. That's not a magic stone. It's a flint. She touched it with her finger. It might even be an arrowhead. It could be hundreds of years old. Jenny looked all around her. There were beds of flowers against the fence and a fish pond in one corner. Beyond the lot yard, there were houses and streetlights and busy roads, and beyond them, the stores of the towns and then the buildings of the city. What was it like here hundreds of years ago? asked Jenny. Her mother took the stone and turned it over in her hand. There were no roads, no cars, no cities, and no towns. Just the people, the animals, and the land itself, she said. It was hard for Jenny to imagine what it must have been like when there were forests instead of cities and fields instead of towns. But then, far in the distance, Jenny thought she saw a man on horseback looking as though he might ride up into the clouds. She blinked, and the man disappeared. Jenny's mother handed her a piece of flint, and they talked about how the world had been when the land was as large as and as open as the sky of hunting on the plains and in the mountains and forests and singing and telling the stories of firelight. Jenny stayed outside all afternoon. She tried to picture people riding their horses across the faraway hills, but all she saw were the cars and the trucks racing along the busy road. She tried to picture young men hunting in the high grass of the plains, their movements slow and their weapons ready. But all she saw was the cat stalking through the flowers and her mother's shrubs. As dusk blurred the shapes in the garden and the yard, Jenny thought she could hear the voices of women bent over their fires, the voices of the soft and laughing. But it was only the radio in the house next door. Jenny was still outside when the moon came up. Jenny called her mother from the house. Come on in, it's getting dark. But Jenny pretended not to hear. She wanted to stay where she was, watching and imagining. Later, she asked if she could sleep in her tent the way people used to sleep in their teepees. Jenny's mother sighed. All right, but we must put your tent close to the house so I can keep an eye on you. Jenny lay awake for a long time that night. She listened to the howling of wolves and gazed out the at the stars. She stared at the sky so hard that she thought she saw a trail of clouds turning into buffalo and ran across the moon. When she finally did fall asleep, the arrowhead was still fast in her hand. Jenny had a dream. She dreamed that she awoke in the night. From somewhere close by came a murmur of low voices. When she cautiously opened the flap of her tent, the world hadn't changed, or the world outside had changed. The moon was corn yellow, and the stars sat low in the blue-black sky. There were no houses or lights, no roads, no cars, and the distance roads rose rolling hills. Where the town had stood, there were fields of grass. Night birds called, and the trees rustled. Jenny's house and yard were gone. She looked around in wonder where the peonies were where the vegetable patch should be have been and the dog dozing the dogs dozing where the flowers had grown in place of the fish pond was a whispering stream painted teepees stood in the clearing smoke drifting past them like the clouds and there not far from her a circle of people sat around a fire their voices soft one of the men turned and looked toward Jenny. He beckoned to her because it was a dream. Jenny knew he, what he wanted. He wanted her to return his arrowhead. The dogs began to bark as Jenny crawled from her tent, but because she was dreaming, she wasn't afraid. She crossed to the fire. The man moved over and sat down, sat or, and Jenny sat down. She placed the arrowhead in his hand. Jenny sat in a circle all through the night while the drum played, the flute sounded, and they told her how the world had been so long ago when the land was as large and as open as the sky, when there were stories and stars and the song and the sun, when everything on earth had a voice and a heart, and time was measured by the changing of the moon.
In the morning, when Jenny really awoke, the flowers were still growing along the fence. The cars were still speeding past the busy road. The arrowhead was still in her hand. Jenny stared beyond her backyard. Clouds drifted past the sun like smoke. The beating of her heart recalled the drumming of her dream. Without a word, Jenny crept from her tent. At the edge of the yard, she knelt in the grass and buried the arrowhead back to the earth. And just for an instant, in the shimmering light, Jenny saw the world as it once was, so long ago, when the land was as large and as open as the sky.